Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, Licensed Professional Counselor, and welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 21. Here at this channel we do a different type of therapy review, or we get a little curious. We get a little curious, we set aside the parts of us that criticize, we set apart the parts of us that uh, know or feel like they know what's happening uh, internally with these couples and we wonder hmm what's happening what's happening that's making them show up this way and learn a little bit about potentially couples and even ourselves if you are returning be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel now let's get started first I want to acknowledge my part <laughs> Um, I have a part that was like, why are we still reviewing this season if decision day has already happened? It's like so confused and it's like, what, what's, why are we still doing this? And so I am working with this part because I feel like what's happening could be really beneficial and useful for us to talk about here on this channel. And... And so I'm working with this part, telling him, yes, you're right. We would not. We would not be still here reviewing this, this show because Decision Day has happened and everything else. We kind of just like, whew. And so it's like, huh, I hear you. And two, I see that some of what's happening. And of course, we still have Chloe and Michael still in the process as well. So there's a way, right? So there's a way. And so also what I'm doing is we're going to really focus on Chloe and Michael because they're the they're the main event and still check in on what's happening with the other couples as they are kind of transitioning into what they would like to do following decision day okay so let's get started first we have Becca and Austin and so Becca and Austin are in spaces where, of course, they've decided to end their marriage and they are, this is life, life after decision day. Becca is um, picking up things. She's packing up the apartment. Claire comes over and they talk about what happened, what happened after they had this huge kind of clash of the Titans at the pizza party. I believe that this was supposed to be. And um, Becca stated that she talked to Austin. She talked to Austin and she had a part of her that was expecting an apology. And that part was definitely disappointed as he was still trying to explain his behavior. And then this part of Austin that was coming in to explain, to explain away. There is this internal like push aside reality that Austin has, this kind of denial that's like active denial there's also this well it's not like that and feels like Becca is being um like her responses are not warranted or she's the way she instead of instead of really sitting and taking in her responses and hearing and learning more about them that is something that Austin has as a challenge even when he's talking to his roommate as a follow-up on this conversation of like, oh, I called Becca and that was a big mistake. And he's, and his roommate was like, well, I'm sure you were thinking and really like processing the situation and what happened. He said, actually, I wasn't. Actually, I blocked it out. See? So there's a part of him that is, again, trying to block out reality. And we have parts of us that do that because maybe reality is just too hard or the pain that of what is is too big is too much because it's like oh if I really didn't like Becca as much as I thought I did then now what has to happen oh now I have to have a, a, a hard conversation with her on camera that could make me look bad oh or I can I would have to really face these feelings and face her and have this hard conversation I don't like conflict uh, you know, like there's all this here. So sometimes we do have parts of us that really work hard to protect us from the reality of what we're feeling and experiencing. And when, when those parts show up and we interact with other people, it can be so painful, the impact of those parts, um, because they're feeling like you're dismissing their 
feelings or that you are being argumentative or combative, the word that Becca used. And for him, Austin's like, me, combative? Never. Because again, that's not his intent, right? His intent is just to be like, oh, that's not that. No, no, that's not it. And in those moments, what he's doing is pushing back on her reality, which feels like she's got to fight. So it, it makes sense why Becca, like that part of Becca used that word, even though for Austin, it just like me combative never. And hmm, let's sit. Let's sit with this, Austin. Let's sit with Becca's experience of you. And so Becca's in a place where she is. She's like, I don't want to be in a in a relationship with someone who hasn't done their work. Because I've, she's like, I've done the work. I used to do these things. I used to gaslight people and, and try to control in relationships. And I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who hasn't like taking full inventory of themselves to learn how they show up in a relationship. And Austin's in a space where he's just saying he's just feeling deeply hurt, feeling deeply hurt because he cares about, he really cares about Becca. And I see that, like, I really see that. Um, you can see his tears, like he is, he is crushed. And he's really crushed that she doesn't trust him. And at the same time, it's like, ooh, what, what, did what did you do to give her reasons not to trust you like we 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 have to make space for that too like make space for his hurt make space for her reality make space to even like oh let's look at me now like make a space for all of that and becca's friends um as she's talking with her friend and austin is chatting with his friends um, Becca's friend said that she felt like he just she just put a lot of energy into Austin. Her relationship with Austin felt like even she left and put aside like her business even to really focus and put all a lot into the marriage. And you can even tell her friend has some like some feelings, some really big feelings about how Becca's showing up or showed up in this relationship. So it makes me wonder like, ooh, is there a part of uh, Becca's friend that has done the same is there an impact of how Becca showed up in this relationship that's having like an impact on her because there's a lot there's a lot of energy there and yes she's her friend and she cares about her and at the same time there seems to be two more here happening um, with Austin he said it's tough he said it's tough he says it with his friends like he know he messed up like he know he messed up and he has a lot of regrets about a lot of things and would change a lot. Uh, he, he also said that at the after party, he's like, there's so much different that I would do. He also stated with his friends that, that he was like really continuing to learn and work through his love and work to continue to love Becca. Uh, so it's interesting. It's interesting that that's, you know, that's here and we're hearing that. Um, Becca say that she's really trying not to be so hard on herself and she fears like just not being too critical or demanding. So she has this part of her like this internal struggle of like, ooh, this was our experience of Austin and ooh, was I too hard on him because I know I have a tendency to be too hard on him. And what could be potentially true is like both. Both of things could be true. Like your experience is your experience of him. And also there were times where I saw this kind of energy that she was naming of like intimacy, 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 like making that the focus all the time on the relationship. And like there was a part of her that was controlling that, like really controlling how Austin navigated this area in their marriage. And was that fair to Austin? And at the same time, giving grace to this part of her that was driving it to because she was getting mixed messages. She was getting mixed signals. So this part was like, this needs to be the focus. And and now what? Like, what was the impact of that on Austin, right? He felt stonewalled and he wanted to shut down. And so then is that the little part that's like, nobody's going to tell me what to do so that I just don't do it. I go to the bedroom of a football player's house now because of that. Or I... Um, have a moment because we're at a wolf sanctuary and you want to put things in one bag and I want to do things my way. And I'm like, you know, so is that what's happening? 
internally in this relationship because a lot of stuff was off camera we don't know so we're just right pontificating we're wondering we're like hmm what else could be here that's making all of these things happen and so becca and emily they go get their uh, like auras read they go to see a medium and um, becca was told that a lot of people see her as a safe space and see her as to be nurturing and because of that she just naturally gives and gives and so it would be beneficial the medium advised her to be aware of that to not overgive and overcompensate and put more energy a part of me wonders like if production like talk to that medium not that i don't um trust mediums or anything of that nature but it just seemed to be like so apropos that this was happening like his parallel of her conversation with her friend um uh, and at the same time this is what she was given it really felt like it landed with becca and um she's she's hearing that and also to the medium talked about her just being more aware of like oh what are you receiving in a relationship and what are you giving like really taking account for both of those things and also to speaking for herself speaking for her truth and not overcompensating with giving just giving 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 so let's be something that becca can get curious like really curious about this part of her that does give let's give over give over compensate what is it trying to get what is it wanting for her um because sometimes we have parts of us that are so relentless they're like we're going to keep doing it because we know that the outcome is like what we're wanting is something that we maybe didn't get that we needed whether it's connection whether it's acceptance uh, whether it's to be heard like if we have not experienced that in our lives and we have parts of us that are so relentless no matter what we're experiencing from the other person whatever red flags are flagging and like it doesn't matter it's like we gonna we're gonna do it like we're going to get this no matter what because we need it we want it we deserve it and that part is right and at the same time we also too need to be aware of our experience of people too like both of those things need to happen and becca also is doubting she's doubting if she's made the right decision she's missing austin and and so too i think is a, a big important thing like we can miss a person we can miss a person and still feel like the relationships ended like both of those things sometimes a part of us may feel like oh because we, we miss this person that means we still need to be connected to them because because like if we don't miss them then the relationship's over it's not that black and white we grief is a is a it's a huge part of a breakup of a relationship and oftentimes you're going to miss the good times you're going to miss the fun laughter the all the quirky i mean all the quirky things they did together um austin eating fruit in the bathtub like all those wonderful things and experiences they've had together it's been a whirlwind i'm sure becca's missing their relationship and at the same time she's still wondering she's still wondering so that's where she is next we have emily and brennan and emily's unpacking she's talking with her friend um or she's packing up actually the apartment she's talking with her friend she hates change she hates when change happens in her life and she doesn't feel like she's processed through things you can tell as her friend she's talking to her friend like there's a part of her that's like dismissing and minimizing her her emotions even as she's naming all of this she's like yeah it's hard to be alone you know i cry a lot i'm sad i'm angry i'm depressed like it's just like nah, 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 nah. it's like listing things off like i gotta go to the grocery store i gotta get eggs milk cheese like it, it's not really allowing her to really sit in the feelings of all this which makes sense um, she's being videotaped and having this conversation, I think is probably produced and forced. Like, does she want to have this conversation? Does she want to be in her feelings while she's packing up her apartment, packing up a marriage that she wanted to work? So it makes sense. And so hopefully I'm hoping that she creates a space to be present with all these things she's naming of feeling um, like crying a lot. Like, well, what are those tears wanting to say? What are they wanting to communicate? Being sad, hurt, angry, depressed. Like all those things. Emily's stating that she wants to know. She wants to know and learn what to avoid in a partner and grow from this. So 
I feel like that's very, uh, very natural. We have, we experience something painful and a part of us comes up and says, never again, never again will we allow something like this to happen. So what, what do we need to avoid? What red flags do we need to avoid? I feel like that's why, where that red flag energy and that language comes from is like, we want to make sure we don't put ourselves in this situation again. Also, she wants to grow. She wants to learn more about herself and grow from this. And Becca comes in to help her move out. And Emily is really appreciating like Becca's voice and her encouragement. She says like she's really articulate and she's just really positive and affirming. And she has this voice that's like feminist energy and women empowerment. And she's liking that. And so that makes me wonder about who, what is it about Emily that there's a part of her that maybe is different and wants to be and wants to have and then embody that energy within herself and is appreciating that and Becca. So it's something for her to get curious about too. So something yeah, for Emily to get curious about. Emily also stated to Becca as they were processing their relationships uh, that they, she said they thought that they could treat us this way for a reason. So it's almost to, there's a question that Emily has like, what was it about me that Brennan thought it was okay to treat me this way. And I wonder, because what was in that, was in that question is blame. Like, Emily's blaming herself for being in this situation. And I feel like what Emily said at the end of last week's episode is like more accurate that there's there's two people playing a role in a relationship and the dynamic and what happens and the clash internally like that is is more about like what's happening in the relationship because there's a lot of stuff Brennan bought brought in there's a lot of stuff Emily brought in and so wondering more about that question like they thought that they could treat us this way for a reason like, ooh, what was it about us? Yes. And, and to, like, let's do that maybe from a place that has some, some grace and some compassion and some, like, some space for, for our Emily and Becca as they, as they, like, look at that question. Brennan, while he's talking with his friend, he went to the pool hall. He said that this process really helped him, really helped him to learn how to get to know other people better, which which made me wonder, like wonder more about how close Brennan's relationships and his connections are in his life, like outside of this process or before this process. I can wonder what those relationships look like, feel like. There's that one friend that did that video call who I felt like really was in tune with Brennan and know, like knew him, like knew him, knew him, maybe even more than Brennan knew himself. And so like that's that friendship seemed like really close and tight. And even this friend seems to know Brennan even more than he knew himself because he's like, it feels like you need some closure. Like there's more you need to say. And Brennan's like, no, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm I'm done. And so like that there's something there. There's something there even with him saying like the thing that he learned about this process was that he just needs to ask more questions if he wants to get to know someone else deeper. I'm like that's the only thing you learned from this. Okay. Like I just that really like I, I really sat with that first like hmm like that was that caught me off guard and then I was, I just want to know more. Like there must be there just must be so much more that Brennan is maybe not aware of. And I'm wondering if there are like parts of him that are blocking like his own awareness of himself and others. And so he said that he found, um, and talking with his friend that he found a diary cam of her talking bad about him and asked her to, to delete it because it felt like it, it wasn't true to their relationship. And he, he said that these were just like baseless accusations and she called him controlling and he just, he's like, that's not, that's not who I am. And so his friend, again, feels like he needs more closure, wants to express more about his relationship. I wonder too, if Brennan could, similar to Austin, what I was naming before, instead of saying and responding to that footage 
on the diary cam. One, there's a part of Brennan that was like going through the diary cam footage. So that's something for our Brennan to get curious about too. Like Emily's diary cam footage is like hers. The fact that he was going through that, I don't know if that was like a natural practice or that's something everybody does. It doesn't seem like that. Like that's the first time, time I've ever heard that be spoken for. And this is like season 17. So something for him to get a little wondering about the fact that he even thought to do that and had the urge to do that to see like, oh, I wonder what she's saying about me. Why is that? And not from like, mm, why is that? But like wondering like, oh, what were you looking for? What were you taking care of internally for you? And then to, can we open it up? Can we open up to potentially the Emily's experience of you may have some validity? Maybe. Tell me what made you say that about me versus that's not me deleted. Tell me more. Tell me more what would make you feel this way to say this tell me tell me what I'm missing you know I feel that uh, Brennan is still in a place of um, like the part of him that feels like this is Brennan versus people's experience of him and not saying I feel like all of that is Brennan and then maybe a part of him that wants to deny that for and it's protecting him from maybe looking like people in his life that have hurt him that's that can usually be a part of that or just being sitting in the reality of himself. That's also, that can be painful at times. So something for Brennan to get curious about. Emily as Becca and Emily were going to the medium. Uh, Emily sitting with the medium and she said that she knows, like she knows who she is. She knows who she is and the life she leads and the life she wants to lead. Like she has that as a firm identity in herself. Um, and she said that she noticed like that there was this hot and heavy energy at the beginning of her relationship with Brennan. It was like very, um, infatuation, like young energy, like really excited about each other. Then all of a sudden when they moved together, like it just like depleted. Um, and there was a huge energy shift and Emily said that she felt uh, validated by hearing this. And I still have the wondering of like, okay, it just feels like very, no on the nose and that's what's making a part of me wonder about is this is this not produced not that this medium isn't doesn't have a gift because that's that's not what i'm questioning it's just like i don't put it past production to do something like this to create a um to create a storyline um because there's been a lot of that especially this season um storylines with um, the production and also it seems to even be with the cast members and speaking of that um, <laughs> Next we have Cameron and Claire and so Cameron is on the phone um, With Michael and he is talking about how he has noticed like after they had their moment the clash of the Titans and Cameron stepped away and he said, you know this notion of the men silencing the women that's something that really triggered him and activated something in him because he said from the entirety of his marriage that claire was curating their relationship and controlling and silencing him he also noticed that claire seems to have a uh, a influence on emily and seeing that in the flesh made him be even more aware of how that was also his experience of claire and he is um really not inclined to stay in communication with her at all after this and so he advised he advised um michael to after decision day to like pull back his energy just to see if naturally if naturally the energy and the connection and the relationship and the affection and the is in the love is still there um and i feel like this is the unfortunate part for michael and chloe which we'll get to later but because cameron is coming from his space of being hurt and feel like he can't trust the process and couldn't trust his wife um his his advice to michael is don't trust it that's his <laughs> advice um because he's i trusted it and look where it got me you know so I think it's it's unfortunate because all of them are in their hurt uh, for the most part. It's so fresh and they're there now when they go to these people like Michael and Chloe to get advice and get some type of guidance. It's going to be very hard, very hard. And I'm 
and it feels like almost if they don't have that awareness that they're coming from that hurt, it can be pretty it could be pretty damaging to to even Chloe and Michael's relationship. But we see it with with Cameron. He is very passionate about the truth, the truth being spoken for uh, because of things being concealed so much. Similarly to, I don't know if you remember when Lauren, uh, which we'll get to in a moment, but when Lauren was like on the after party and um, there was like, she was just tired of taking in Orion's dishonest words. And she was just, she came out, she said, well, no, this is what happened. And this is what happened. And no, that's not what she told me. It's like, it's just like this eruption. Like I'm tired of withholding things. That's also what seemed to happen for Cameron at the after party because he started to say everything I mean everything uh about the different relationships and things that he's experienced and showing like how to that um you know Brennan had messages um to other women on Instagram and then Emily um went out one night and made out with the guy and how like they didn't want that information to come out because of how it will look on Emily's side. And at the same time, uh, like we have to be honest about what's happened and and also too about that double date situation and how he's saying like it just wasn't true and felt like Claire was trying to manage the narrative of all of that. Um, what I what I could imagine, what I could imagine to be true is um and really sitting with that, right? Like Claire showing up as this uh, puppet master, for lack of a better uh, word, like this part of her that wants to pull the strings. Um, and she has this part we talked about where that is, um, that does insert herself in other people's relationships to, it seems like to protect them from getting hurt or to protect them from looking a certain way. Uh, and oftentimes when we're in a space where we're jumping to insert ourselves in other people's lives, that means that we are actively avoiding some things in our own life. So something for Claire to get curious about. Um, I wonder with her, this energy that she has to want to protect, like also, is there something that she's afraid to not see? Is, she, is there something she's afraid that everybody will see? Um, she is... A therapist and she is coming on national television to get married at first sight I'm wondering if she's concerned about how the world will see her um, she really tried very hard to even like suppress her emotions like she's like oh I don't want to get emotional like she um, she had that energy she had this energy too that was just like very very intellectual very headspace and also to would talk and use like this pressure talk and would talk very fast so there seems to be a lot there that's that she maybe hasn't had access to um, a lot of protection around her emotions and around who she is and wanting to like there's a lot of like oh this needs to be a certain way and something for Claire to get really get curious about um, you know the impact of all of that is that she's really taking a lot of if what Cameron is saying is true she's taking a lot of power away from Emily in this situation like Emily to have her own wings to fly and also too there the hurt right the hurt on Cameron the hurt on Cameron in this relationship but it's like do, we don't know Claire's side um, of it Claire hasn't spoken to a lot of the uh, what Cameron's naming so I want to be Oh, you know, want to bring that in and speak to that too. Uh, and at the same time, if what he's saying is true, there's a lot for Claire to get curious about on all of this. Um, for Brennan and, and Emily's relationship, it does not surprise me that there was like some retaliation and that there was some, maybe some inappropriate stuff. Cause that, that speaks to how they just weren't connected from the jump. Like there was this excitement and then it was like, oh, and then things started to happen and then the checkout like the checkout for Brennan he's checked out in the marriage and so that doesn't that doesn't surprise me at all and at the same time I know it has a huge impact it still has an impact that wasn't named and wasn't spoken for in all of this 
and also acknowledges to why Emily was saying, you know, I did some things too. I know it wasn't just you. And at the same time, there's so much protection, right? Even Claire, like protecting Emily and uh, Cameron, protecting Emily and and Becca, you know, stepping up on the after party, like, you know what, what happened, um, Cameron, you know, and Cameron's saying, yes, you're seeing text messages, but I have context. And so it's just all, it's a lot coming out, so much coming out uh, between uh, these four specifically, Cameron and Claire and uh, Emily and Brennan. It seems like definitely Cameron and Claire are, are, are done. And we'll hear maybe more from Claire's side of things. Uh, but I'm hoping for both of them to get curious, like both of them to get curious about that. Even for Cameron to get curious about what internally was happening for him. What was it about this relationship? Because I really feel like Cameron did, did have a part of him that was so fond of Claire and was attracted to her. And at the same time, it seems like Claire just did not open herself up to really be in this, like really fully be in this, which is unfortunate. Like her way of being in this was being a, a helper through this versus like being in it. And maybe she doesn't know how to, maybe she doesn't know how to take off the therapist hat, take off the helper hat, take off the let me advise you and speak for you and advocate for you hat and just be herself. Maybe she doesn't know how to do that. Next we have, which is just a little blip, uh, not much, but next we have Lauren and Orion and Orion reaches out to her to have a, like a little play date where they're shooting arrows at each other. And Lauren is loving this activity. She says she's hoping to get some aggression out and take some shots at her ex-husband. And that's definitely what she did. Lauren definitely still has this part of her that uses humor and aggression. And we see both of them in this activity. Okay. <laughs> both of them in this activity. He's like, yeah, one of those arrows hit me in the heart. She was like, great aim. That's just what I was aiming for. Like that. I'm like, I'm wondering how that landed on Orion. Like the fact that Lauren was shooting him in the in the chest at his heart on purpose. Like, I don't know if, if that's what she was saying, but I'm wondering if that's what it felt like, what he felt in the moment. And we're seeing that as they're Lauren's asking Orion, they're checking in with each other, like how you're doing. They both said they're doing well and they're doing better than where they were before. And Lauren's saying, hey, um, well, how are you feeling about getting back out there and dating? He's like, I don't really know if what we have is through yet. And she's like, oh, really? Okay. Like, she's taken a bit back by that. And so he's putting it in her court about, like, yeah, sitting with that because I am, I'm wanting to, to see if we still have something. And so she's saying that she wants to um, sit with what she has capacity for. If she, cause she, she feels like, um, she was putting in a lot of effort to make the marriage work, to show up for Orion and didn't get that in return. And so now is she going to reignite that? Like, is she going to start that process and do more work? And she wants to sit to see what she has capacity for. I have a wondering around Orion feeling like there's unfinished business here. Yeah. I just wonder what what he's feeling, what he's thinking. I don't know. He doesn't really say it explicitly. So this will be interesting. It sh really should be interesting to see. Um, I know that everyone has very strong feelings about this. I'm sure of it. I just don't know if Orion is, is ready. Like that's, that's what I'm concerned. I don't know. I'm not saying he's not. I just, I wonder if he is like, what has his process been like internally? to to get to a space where he's like open to re-exploring their connection he did talk about lessons he's learned how they've been painful and and they both like named these things i think at, it was at um michael and chloe's reception and still i'm like hmm wondering wondering i want to know more um about it not that he owes it to me but just wondering uh, what's making him say like now I feel like I'm ready to revisit this relationship and I feel like it's great that Lauren's gonna sit with it and, and allow her to be with herself to hear what she needs and what she has capacity for 
last but not least we have michael and chloe and michael and chloe are learning more and more about each other (laughs) as we learn that chloe has this want this need this desire to have a animal sanctuary and along with fostering children we knew that and so they go to this animal sanctuary that's huge has so many goats cute little goats and um michael so michael's exploring he's like this is a this is a thing okay so tell me tell me he's like gauging it like so I want to know more. Like, he's leaning in. He's leaning in. And at the same time, too, he's also like, whew, this is a lot. So, she wants to foster five children. Um, She wants to foster them before having the animal sanctuary. And at the same time, there's going to be some some bleed over. And wants the the foster children to have a place in uh, the animal sanctuary. Um, to help, right, help them, like, re rehabilitate, caring for them, building connection. I think that's a beautiful, it's beautiful work, really, that she's naming. Um, and also, too, she talked about um, wanting older children, like middle school, high school kids, because they tend to have more behaviors that people are concerned about. Um, they have parts of them, right, different parts of them that are protecting themselves because they've experienced so much hurt early on so they have more artillery like at their disposal to help them protect them from hurt and it shows up in ways that are oftentimes like stressful to the people that are parenting them um so michael's a bit taken back by all of this um he's like this is not i didn't have like i love animals but i don't want an animal sanctuary like that and fostering that many children probably not going to do it what I'll say, Chloe, I want, I do, again, I feel like, like you may be going to know what I'm going to say before I'm going to say it, but I want Chloe to get curious about this too, like this desire to help others. Because again, I feel like helping others is, is a beautiful um, and noble and thing that we all need because we do need help. Like we need to help each other. We need to be with each other. And also to, um, is there something that Chloe is is trying to fix by doing this like what is chloe trying to fix internally for herself by caring for animals and in this way what is she trying to look for and uh care for in herself by fostering five children there's a reality sometimes the reality of what we want to do versus in our mind what we think and hope it would be like and so I feel like her want, her desire, her dream to do both of these things, like there's nothing wrong with either of these goals. And at the same time, for her to look at her capacity to, like her capacity to, um, Chloe's a person, there's a part of her that needs a lot of reassurance, that needs a lot of spaciousness. And so I'm like, ooh, wondering like, is Michael concerned about like how that will impact Chloe? And then what, what will he have to do for Chloe? Like... How much reassurance does he have that capacity to do that? Does he have capacity to be there for the kids in that way? And the animals, like there's a lot to take in. And so it's like, yes, this is your dream. And then also what is your capacity? And those two things are different. They're very different. Um, And starting small and building like, oh, let's foster one child and see. Okay, now let's foster two and see. And then build up to the five um, versus like, let's sign up for five. Uh, because also to like the reality of the foster care system is that there aren't a lot of resources that are often given to parents who foster. So like there's there's a lot that I feel Chloe in this moment isn't potentially or hasn't potentially. Um, she may have, but hasn't maybe assessed. And so they're talking. They're talking and rehashing this like dream world that Chloe wants for them and their family. And um, Michael also named that they both um, they like consummated the marriage that as they were talking about intimacy and playing with the, the the toys and all the things that they wondered, like, yes, then they like slid into that and talking about their future places that they, that they want to live. And then it was the least situation that always comes up every season seems to, and are they going to move to in together afterwards? You can tell that Chloe's a bit taken back about, well, do you think that like, do you think we're going to move away from each other if we... If we live separately and Michael's like, well, no, remember you took that, you took time away and that just like reaffirmed our connection and maybe we can work out a plan and stay for like four or five days. Um, 
you know, week with each other. Like it doesn't have to be a, a either or. Um, we can see what works best. And you can tell that Chloe has a part of her that is concerned. Like she's definitely concerned about this. And I'm also wondering too, what's happening internally with Michael. There seems to be like some steps back that's been taken. And I wonder what that's what that's about. I really wonder what that's about. Is it because of the the dream that Chloe has of her animal sanctuary and fostering five children? Is that him taking some beats back? Like what's there? And as he's talking with uh Cameron even, he's like trying to assess like his true feelings and maybe um he's he's feeling like he's in this because because he's trying to make Chloe feel comfortable or is he in this because he wants to be in this and he really cares about her and wants to be in this marriage with her like there's he's trying to navigate what he feels and and making sure that he has everything he needs in order to make a, a decision on decision day like because he just he's like am i in the emotional space like of wanting to stay in this um and that's when cameron gave him the advice well hey create some distance and then see like see how it goes so they're at the month anniversary beer spa and they're with each other michael you know he chooses to get in the buff and he feels more comfortable that way and they're talking and so then chloe's kind of doing like a temperature check so it's almost like too that chloe's noticed the distance because there's there's just a different energy in, in michael this episode i don't know if like does that do you did am i the only one who sees this because it, it feels different it feels like he's just like hmm well i don't know i don't know we'll see I don't know my emotions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have enough information. And so Chloe's like t temperature checking. Like, so tell me, out of all the things that you wanted, did you get what you wanted? Did you? Is there some things that are here that you're like, ah, I could take or leave? And so Michael named like, hey, he didn't really seek out someone who wanted an animal <laughs> sanctuary, but he's not, you know, upset about it. Um, Chloe is saying that she, you know, Michael pretty much fits the description of what she wanted. And so then she's saying, so maybe I'm hearing you say that like, Hey, if today was decision day, that like, what would your answer be? And she was like, he said, well, I just would need to know more information. Like we're working towards the yes, but I'm still not there yet. And so she's saying, so I'm hearing you say your, your answer is no. And he said, no, it's my answer is I don't have enough information. And so the face that Chloe had, like her eyes, there was so much like concern and fear because she just didn't, she wasn't aware. And she named that too um, in her confessional before they see Dr. Pia that she's like, I did not know. I did not know Michael had these doubts. Um, and it makes me wonder what they're not saying. Now I'm like, I already was wondering what they weren't saying, but now I'm even wondering even more now that Michael's showing up in this way, like, what is he not saying? And so they talk about their plans of after decision day, where they are, where they, where they are currently. And Michael talks about how aligned, how aligned they are on pretty much everything. Uh, and so he's like, that's, that's great. And he also shared too that like Michael stated that Chloe hasn't met his mother. And so Dr. P is like, wait a second now. I'm confused. Um, and Michael said, no, I want her to be involved. And at the same time, I'm waiting till after decision day. And so then uh, Dr. P is like trying to make sense of that. She's like, tell me more uh, about this. And then Chloe almost comes in to save Michael from from this tough conversation of like, I'm okay with this. I'm in alignment with this mindset of let's not ruffle. Let's not, um, put in, like make his mother, I'm assuming they're, they're trying to protect her feelings from being anxious and protect her from having unnecessary frustration if, you know, after decision day. And so Dr. P is like, Hey, I respect your decision. And at the same time, I'm wondering if you're really being honest with yourself, if you're being true, because it feels like very curated. It feels like this response is not how you're really feeling. And Chloe's just like shaking her head. And this is again, where I feel like in a moment where someone's showing you or telling you their observation of you, it's like, sit with it at, at the, at the minimum, sit with it. You don't, don't have to just like dismiss it 
Um, because, I mean, I sense that Dr. P is actually right in this moment. Be- and what makes me even feel that way is because, like, her nonverbals, like, won't even allow uh, <laughs> Dr. P's words to be to 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 be a thing like to be a reality it's like nope and you see this like dr uh dr pia said well okay i hear you say that and maybe there's some concerns and maybe there are some concerns about decision day like are there concerns and um michael is talking about like him just wanting to know how this process is going to happen after decision day what their life like what their living situation is going to be like and um and then chloe's saying well you know i'm in i'm in agreement you know that doesn't really matter where we live doesn't matter necessarily as long as you know we're still in the same space and then dr p is like i call i call bs again like in her ther her therapist way of saying i'm sensing that that what's happening what you're naming isn't really what you're feeling in your heart of heart and if you are doing this for me if you're doing this for the cameras that's fine but also make sure you're being open and honest with each other and then we notice like this part of Chloe that comes out like hey I did not I did not come to this to say like I'm going to be raw I'm going to I'm going to be honest I'm going to be open and I want to I'm going to meet my person and that's what she wants yes and I also see how both of them, both Michael and Chloe, both have, and we've named this before, this very reassuring part of themselves. They reassure each other because it's almost like they're trying to reassure their own anxiety internally by doing that. And then also, too, they use this very careful language that's like very, um, very disarming language. Like, hey listen if this is this i'm i'm alignment with you i you know and yes there probably is a part of them that wants to be in alignment wants wants to let michael to have his process and there's also maybe a part of chloe that is concerned that she hasn't met his mom yet uh there's also a part of chloe that may be concerned about the fact that he wants to live separately and so naming that like naming that allowing that to to have space in the room like for michael to be like yeah you can stay in your apartment and i want to name that i'm i'm like wondering hey do you like me like is there a problem like not trying to change your not trying to change what you do with my emotions but i just want to name it i just want to acknowledge it i want to bring it into the room and i'll take like i'll take care of it and at the same time is maybe there's something we can do to talk about this and really assess it um and so i'm hoping I'm hoping that um, they will become more honest with each other because they haven't really had any conflict like that yet. It's more of reassuring each other. There's just like a lot of reassurance and a lot of nice language uh, happening. And so hoping that they can get more honest with each other. But you tell me, you tell me your thoughts about what you're seeing with this couple as they're learning and growing together and preparing themselves for real life real marriage and decision day Uh, let me know what you feel about these couples these other people who are also exploring their life after decision day and if you're still with us be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and as always be cool be calm be centered peace